consumed Norzelia as its three powers, the Kingdom of Glenbrook, the Duchy of Esfrost, and the Holy State of Hyzant, contended for the realm's salt. But through the efforts of House Wolfort, the violent chapter of the realm's history that began with the discovery of salt crystals was brought to an end. The world, united under the rule of King Roland of Glenbrook, took its first steps toward a bright new era. And on one peaceful day, a group of stalwart allies gathered at long last for a wedding. Lord Serenoa, Lady Frederica would like a few words with you before the ceremony. Uh, good morning, Frederica. I look forward to the ceremony today. As do I, Serenoa. Did you sleep well last night? Truth be told, I did not. And yourself? Unfortunately, I couldn't seem to calm my nerves. <laughs> Well now, it's not every day you see the heads of House Wolfort looking so ill at ease. I must agree, Roland. I can scarcely recall the last time I felt so nervous. Though I am happy that this day has finally come, I am even more anxious than when facing an army. Is that so? I must admit, even I'm beginning to feel on edge now. Understandably so. The significance of being united with the one you love far outweighs any battle. You are right, Benedict. As always. Tis also far more joyous. Frederica, there is something I must tell you before the ceremony. What is it? It's about my lineage. You see... Uh, I had no idea. So that means that you and Roland are... They were the last words of Lord Simon, and a secret that shall never leave this room. I apologize for telling you now, but I wanted you to know the truth before we wed. As did I. I thank you for confiding in me. But knowing Saranoa's lineage changes nothing. Because I love you for who you are, and not where you came from. As I love you, Frederica. Thank you. Allow me to share in this glorious day with a vow. I swear to be a king worthy of your trust. Lord Simon, Lady Destra, King Regna, if only you were here to see this. Pardon the intrusion, but it is time for Lady Frederica to get changed. But of course, I cannot thank you enough, Jerome. If it weren't for you and the others in the village, I would not be able to wear a traditional Rosellen gown on my wedding day. It is our pleasure. Please, let me thank you in return for the honor of officiating the ceremony. An honor well deserved. After all, it was your faith in House Woolfort that brought us to where we are today. The Roselle are part of our family. As House Woolfort is a part of ours, we shall be ever at your side. There you are, Your Majesty. The bride and groom are very busy and ought not to be bothered. <laughs> bothered? I simply came here to give them my blessing. Unless I am bothering you. <laughs> Far from it, Roland. Indeed. Being in your company puts me at ease. It seems you two have returned to your usual selves. Shall we make for the ceremony now? Have you come to tell me something, Hewitt? 
Yes, my lord. Lady Cordelia asked me to summon you. Has she now? Very well then. Let us see what she needs. Elsewhere, guests began to arrive in great numbers, each eagerly awaiting the ceremony. I wonder if Frederica has changed into her gown by now. I pray her nerves haven't gotten the best of her. Perhaps I should see how she's faring. This ain't like you at all, Gila. I'm sure the young lady's doing just fine. But that girl has always been too serious for her own good. How curious. This is the first time I've seen you so nervous. I know how you feel, but you gotta calm down. It's not like you can walk down the aisle for her. No, I cannot. Truth be told, I never expected to hear such words from you, Eridor. In fact, I anticipated you to be the most anxious among us, given your history with Lord Serenoa. <laughs> there ain't nothing for me to worry about. The wee lad's grown into a fine young man. He brought peace to this land with his own two hands. He's no less a hero than his father was. I and Frederica was beside him every step of the way. I suppose you're right. I needn't worry over her any longer. It seems I have much to learn from you, Eridor. Though there is something you should know. The more nervous Eridor is, the calmer he feigns to be. I imagine he's doing all he can to hold back tears right now. Quiet, Anna. I refuse to ruin their big day with my weeping and wailing. Even though the young lord is... Well, he's all grown up and getting married and... To such a perfect bride. <laughs> it's refreshing to see you haven't changed. There is one more thing you should know. I too am proud to be here to witness their union. As members of House Wolfort, let us do all we can to support our leaders. As if I do any different. Together, we can ensure a bright future for both them and Norzelia. Aye, what a joyous day this is. Let's celebrate with spirits, and lots of them. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Master Clarice, Master Archibald, let us toast to the bride and groom. Oh, what a happy day. There is nothing more delightful than a wedding. <laughs> you certainly are in high spirits, Master Lionel. Tis not only Lionel, my friend. Today, everyone across the realm rejoices. Let us drink to Lord Serenoa and Lady Frederica, the future of Nozelia. Aye. Battles we fought were as bloody and brutal as those of the Salt Iron War. But they carved a path to a new era, one where the three nations work together at long last. I propose a toast to peace, freedom, and salt. I couldn't agree more. Those three are precious treasures to us merchants. Oh, -ho! forgive Lionel for prying, Master Clarice. But it sounds like you found a way to make some coin. How keen you are. Now I tell you this in confidence, but... Have a look at this plate. It is a new type of earthenware that utilizes salt in its glaze. Why, what a sheen. I've never seen anything like it. Hmm, a salt glaze, <laughs> yes. 
Lionel thinks this will sell very well. It certainly is beautiful. But I imagine it costs quite the fortune. Or so one would think. In truth, very little salt is used in its making. And the more salt crystals are excavated, the cheaper salt becomes. Aha! So the glaze is far less expensive than it seems. But people still consider salt to be a great luxury. Which means pretty plates like this one could be sold for a tidy sum. Just so. Customers will gladly loosen their purse strings for such luxuries, and merchants can fill their coffers with the profit. A golden opportunity for buyers and sellers alike. Lionel would be a fool to let it pass him by. Ah, Master Clarus, pray listen, for Lionel has just had a stroke of genius. Let us add the emblem of House Walford to this plate, and sell it as a memento of the occasion. A fine idea. There would be no shortage of demand for such a precious item. We must speak to the craftsman straight away. God, that has be good. Continue on like this, and misfortune is sure to find you both. The war is over, Master Archibald. There is only good fortune to be had these days. Indeed. Tis a golden age, in every sense of the word. I disagree. Master Archibald speaks true. If you dare sully the Wolfort name to line your pockets, misfortune will find you. Anna! <laughs> your stealth never ceases to amaze, Lionel. Please do not misunderstand. We were merely jesting, yes. Ha ha. I pray that is the case, for your sakes. Uh, Lionel is sorry. Uh, please accept our humblest apologies. Perhaps you ought to heed this old man's words next time. But saying that now may just be rubbing salt in the wound. Master. <laughs> You'll have to forgive an old man his word plays on this joyous day. Yes, I suppose I will. The hall is alive with the jovial chatter of its guests. That joy, however, is not shared by all in attendance. <sighs> Is something the matter, Lila? You seem more dour than ever. I apologize. I suppose it unbefitting of the occasion. Let me guess what's troubling you. It's a certain little boy, isn't it? How dare you meddle in my affairs, Milo! Don't take it personally. Meddling is what I do. You didn't tell him anything, did you? Like what? The fact that his mother is overseer of the Ministry of Medicine? <sighs> is that a threat? What is it that you want? I should be asking you that. The war is over and your position is changed. Why don't you go see your son? Edor was at fault for what happened, not you. Whatever the reason, it won't change the fact that I abandoned him. I haven't the right to call myself his mother, especially after all this time. Besides, I have yet to atone for my sins. I've been tasked with governing Hyzant, so I haven't the leisure of... Yes, yes, so much responsibility, so little time, yet another pretty excuse to stand idly by. Now that you've had your turn to speak, allow me to take mine. There is a boy who has been highly anticipating today's ceremony. He is a special child who can peer into the future. And in that future, he has seen his mother embrace him at long last, here and now. <gasps> Unfortunately, for however hard he tries, he cannot see his mother's face. He's been searching for her for a long, long time. He even made it through the war 
ever dreaming of their reunion. I... see. But it's quite easy to change the future he sees. All one has to do is stand around and sigh. Perhaps it's a befitting punishment for someone who used magic to toy with life. But I think if she truly wishes to atone for her sins, she ought to start with her own child first. <sighs> Here he comes. What will you do? I... I want his dream to come true. Thank you for helping me see that. Think nothing of it. I simply wish to see those darling eyes of yours fill with tears. And still, I am in your debt. Lila and Kohog are reunited at last. As the two share in a prolonged hug, a mother and father watch from nearby. I see. I did not know Lila's son had joined House Wolfort. I'm so happy for you, Kohog. Lila must be over the moon right now. You are Hasabara, yes? That I am, Lord Sparog. A tavern keep and proud member of House Wolfort, too. Sorry you had to see me crying like this, and on such a happy day. I lost my boy in the war, you see, so sometimes I just can't help myself. You needn't apologize. I understand all too well how you feel. Our children are our future, and nothing is sadder than losing them. I... I'm sorry for your loss, Lord Svarog. I have only myself to blame for his untimely death. Not a day goes by that I do not think of what I could have said or done differently. I know. But there's no change in the past, no matter how much we want to. Hello, Lord Svarog. Hasabara? Ah, uh, you are? Please, call me Ians. I'm a member of House Wolfort and a blacksmith by trade. One of the hardest workers I've ever met, too, and that's saying something. He's got real promise when it comes to smithing, and never shied away from a fight. Yes, I have heard tell of his achievements. What can I do for you, young man? Actually, I should like to learn S. Frost's ironworking techniques. I once studied at the archives in the Grand Duchy, but the war put a quick end to that. Now that the fighting is over, I want to craft things other than weapons. Like fine tools, bridges, buildings, and ships. I want to use my skills to create things people will need in the peaceful days ahead. And the Asfrost, you know how to work iron better than anyone. I can't tell you how impressed I was by that death snell. Indeed. And there's no telling what wonders the three nations can accomplish if they work together. New technologies will open the door to new possibilities. Just imagining what we could achieve fills me with unbridled excitement. Hmm. Ah, oh, my apologies. I seem to have forgotten my place. A humble blacksmith like myself has no right to ask such a favor of you. For showing me how brightly your passion burns, I will accept no apologies. I shall make the arrangements right away. The future is in the hands of the ardent youth. I have high hopes for you, Ians. Thank you, Lord Svarog. I won't let you down. <laughs> I'm already looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Hasabara, it is true that we cannot change the past, but we can help shape the future. Aye. The love between a parent and their child will never die, and neither will their dreams. It's up to us to keep their memory alive. Indeed, we must be as ardent as the youth of today. I will keep moving forward, so please, watch over me, Trekan.
While the other attendees are immersed in their thoughts, Cordelia spends her time in a quiet corner of the venue away from the crowd. Why won't you attend the ceremony, General of Laura? Please understand, Lady Cordelia. Though the battle may be over, the fact remains that I led the invasion of Glenbrook. I have no right to be present on such a joyous occasion. That's not true! So please don't say that. I appreciate the sentiment, but my answer is still the same. I shall stand guard outside the hall. General of Laura. Ah, here you are, Cordelia. Shouldn't you be getting ready about now? You wouldn't want to be late. Brother, please tell General of Laura to attend the ceremony. <laughs> Your Majesty, my hands are stained with blood. I do not belong at a wedding that symbolizes a peaceful future. You aren't the only one with a bloody past. Everyone here has fought long and hard to make it through the war. I too have slain my share of enemies, but not because I wanted to. And I hope I never have to do so again. You feel the same, don't you? I do. I've had more than my fill of war. It is not the soldiers who are to blame, but the rulers who give them orders. It was our ambition and negligence, our doubts and hatred that forced your hands. For this, I apologize to you both. Know that I intend to spend the rest of my life atoning for it. Your Majesty. But you have brought peace to the realm, King Roland. Not by my power alone. I owe a great deal of thanks to those who stood beside me. That includes you, General. Your Majesty. And now, on this beautiful day, my dearest friend is getting married to the love of his life. I hope you will join us as both Cordelia's knight and someone who will help us shape the realm's future. We ought to set our eyes on the days ahead not the ones behind us. I'm sure father and brother would agree. Understood. It would be my honor to attend. Oh, thank you, brother. Come, General of Laura. The ceremony's about to begin. We must think of how best to congratulate the happy couple. Well said, Your Majesty. It seems your feelings got through to the General. And I feel better for it. But this is just the beginning. It was Cordelia who first realized the importance of our future over our past. She has truly become strong. But you have as well. You are a fine lord. As a member of the Kingsguard, that I can assure you. Is that your way of reminding me of my place here within the walls and not gallivanting about town? Precisely. Now, let us make for the ceremony. Saranoa, I am ready now. That Rosellen gown suits you perfectly, Frederica. You look like a rose in full bloom. Thank you. It pleases me to hear you say that. But I am a wild rose no longer. I am your bride, and a woman who carries the future of Norzelia upon her shoulders. I shall think of the new era before us as I walk beside you on the path we have chosen. Together. So long as you are at my side, I can continue on however far. 
Let us work together to ensure the path we have chosen is the right one. But of course, that is the way of House Wolford. My friends, it would appear the young couple is ready to begin. Without further ado, let us commence the ceremony. Please welcome the bride and groom, Frederica Estros and Sarah Noah Wolford. Shall we, Frederica? Aye, Sarah Noah. <laughs> 